We all know that when people with coronavirus sneeze or cough on you, you're at risk of getting it. But even when we speak or sing or shout, particles come out of our noses and mouths. Big bits of spittle can come flying out when you're shouting, and smaller droplets and aerosolized bits can also come out in clouds that may linger in the air. In some settings, especially crowded indoor rooms where many people are gathering, there's the possibility that clouds of the virus expelled when someone speaks might be able to stay aloft in the air and potentially infect people further than the recommended six feet of social distance. What's the evidence, you ask? Well, there was that time in late January when 10 people were infected in a windowless restaurant in Guangzhou, China. More than 80 people had shared the dining room that day, but the 10 that got sick were all sitting in the path of one air conditioning vent that may have sucked in viral particles from someone in the room later confirmed to have it. Another classic example scientists bring up is a choir practice back in March in Washington state. 53 out of 61 people who attended came down with COVID-19. The act of singing, where you're breathing deeply and projecting your voice, spews tiny virus particles from deep inside the lungs that can then stay aloft in the air. Researchers look at these examples and say, well, it's possible, especially in crowded indoor rooms with not so great ventilation, that the virus can build up in the air and travel on air currents, spreading to others. What's still unclear is how long the virus lingers in the air, how far it travels through a room, how much you need to breathe in to get infected, and how commonly it spreads this way. But scientists at the World Health Organization say airborne transmission cannot be ruled out. So what can you do to protect yourself? Well, it seems like airflow has something to do with it, so researchers recommend making the indoors more like the outside. What they mean by that is to open the windows, put some fans in them to pull outside air in. That fresh air will scatter the clouds of virus that might exist, and that way, you're less likely to breathe in a big, infectious dose of the virus. They also recommend cleaning indoor air, perhaps by using an air purifier. You might consider doing what Seema Lakdawalla, a flu researcher at the University of Pittsburgh does. When she encounters someone, she tries not to talk to them straight on, face to face, in person. Right, so what I do is when I'm walking and I can't have six feet of distance between me and someone else, I tend to turn my head so that I am not directly face to face with somebody that I'm breathing in their entire plume of air. Some of this might be common knowledge by now, but make sure that you wear your mask right and also keep a personal space bubble of six feet between you and other people. The mask will catch a lot of the droplets that come out when you speak or laugh or cough and also block some of other people's droplets from getting into your nose and mouth. And that six feet of space between you and others means there's more air passing between you to dilute any clouds of virus that might be expelled. The last tip is to limit the amount of time you spend indoors with other people. The more time you spend, especially indoors, talking to someone who's infectious or breathing in a lingering virus cloud, the more likely you are to get infected. So yeah, experts don't recommend that you spend a lot of time at the grocery store picking out the perfect peach or that you drink the night away at a bar. By keeping yourself moving and the air around you moving, you'll minimize your chances of downing a big infectious whiff of the virus. For NPR, I'm Ping Huang. I'm a global health and development reporter for the Science Desk.